Hi, welcome to part two of this tutorial series for the short film Love in the Time of Advertising. Uh, my name is David Boxer. I'm the co-creator and lead technical director and animator on the short film. Uh, in this series, uh, I'm going to show you how to go, how I uh, completed the montage, the billboard uh, building montage in the short film. It was one of the more uh, technically complicated shots in the project. Uh, in part one, I went through uh, how to rig the billboard and uh, how to write a tool in order to aid with that process. In part two, I'm going to show you how to animate it and uh, in the process write a tool to help with that as well. So. So here is the billboard we rigged in uh, part one. Uh, since part one, I made uh, a few changes to the to the script that creates these controllers. Uh, the biggest change I made was that I added a geo attribute. So instead of uh, controlling visibility by turning the visibility of the controller on and off, I uh, I'm now setting visibility on the geometry by setting this uh, attribute on and off which is a fairly simple change in the script. In this part, we want to animate uh, animate this billboard turning on and off. So let's just uh, animate one of these sections manually over here. So we could see uh, what uh, what it's going to what it's going to look like at the end. So I'm going to take all of this and set my geo to off and set my geo off here. And basically we want it to be kind of a time lapse uh, time lapsey look so this is going to kind of be rotated uh, in a random fashion. Then the geo is going to turn on. and then it's going to zero out. And we want the same for we want the same for this, so we'll just animate all of these together. And then the geo turns on and then it zeroes out. And then we want to offset this. So I'm going to select these two. Add one there. Add it in between here. So now we're getting something along the lines of what we want, but we want to basically extend that out to the whole. Uh, the whole billboard. And you could do it manually, of course, like I just did. But since there are like, uh, you know, dozens of parts in each of these billboards and we have nine billboards that we have to go through, it uh, is often easier to just write a small tool to help with this process. So we basically just want a script that does exactly this right here except does it procedurally so let's open up the script editor and uh, see what commands we need in order to do this script so let's delete all this I'll just delete all of the animation on here. So our basic step is going to be to rotate the object randomly. 
set geo keyframe on on second key and then rotate to zero. So obviously this second step needs a keyframe for the for the geo to be off, so set geo keyframe to off on first key. So and then rotate to zero on the third key. So that's basically the steps we're going to start filling out with code. So let's take a look at what the script editor is doing when we're doing this stuff manually. That'll give us a basis to start filling in this code over here. So rotate the object randomly. We just rotate it and this pops up. So we're going to copy and paste that into here. Then we want to set, make sure that the geo is set to on or to off. And we're going to copy that in here. And we're going to set a key on that and set a key on the geo. So now we're going to copy all of this. Set geo keyframe to off. And now we want to set it to on. Keys. Copy that in here. And then we want to zero these out. So I don't really need uh, these keyframes over here since they're just basically duplicating the rotation keyframe on the on the off. And the rest of it looks pretty good. So if we delete, uh, if we delete this right now, delete all the animation, and well, this isn't going to work in uh, Python, but it will work in Mel, except for these, except for these comments. So run that up. Oh. So it didn't set it didn't uh, set the current time. So we want to make sure that we're uh, switching time too. So I just undid that, and so set current time to zero then move to 1, and then move to 2. So now we have a very simple procedural, uh, procedural animation, but it's all hard-coded to just this, just this first object. So we want to uh, convert it to Python, and then we want to uh, add randomness to it so that it's always different. So over here, we'll make sure to uh, to set our current time. Just copy and paste that back in. Okay, and now we want to start uh, converting it to Python.
Well, before we do that, we want to uh, simplify it as much as possible. So, as you can see here, I'm setting current time uh, in the set keyframe. Uh, in the set keyframe command, you could actually set what time you want to uh, you wanted to set a keyframe at. In order to find out uh, to find out what options are available to you, you could always press F1 in Maya, and it'll open up. Uh, It'll open up the Maya help documents. So you want to double click on technical documents and hit commands Python or Mel if you're doing Mel. And we're going to put our set key, set keyframe. And you can basically see all of the, all of the inputs it's going to take with example code. So this is super useful in any scripting in any Maya scripting you're gonna do. I always have the help window open on the, in, in my Chrome window when I'm coding. And we'll look at, uh, we, we'll find time here and that's gonna take in uh, a T value so So we'll go back here and we'll put set keyframe minus t0 and then set keyframe minus t1. And we could start getting rid of these current time. And we could actually put in uh, values as well with minus V, which you'll find over here too. So we don't even need to do set attributes on these. We could basically just set keyframes on exactly the time period we specified. So we'll set a keyframe here with a value of zero. And then we could get rid of this command right here. Uh, we're going to need to set the rotation. We're going to need to find a random value uh, for a rotation here. And then we could get rid of this altogether. And then we'll change this to set keyframe, negative T1, negative V1, so that's going to set a keyframe for us with a value of 1, and then again we'll replace these set attributes with set keyframes. And at this point we want it to be setting it at Two. Frame two. So now that we have basically the base. Uh, commands that we need to actually create this animation without setting time back and forth, let's convert it to Python. So to do that, as before, in part one, import my commands as MC is always going to be your first, uh, it's always going to be your first, uh, first line of code so that you could call all of the Maya commands. And we'll just quickly convert all of this.
as you can see, going straight from Mel and copying and pasting to uh, into Python to convert is kind of a tedious process. So, but as long as you're unfamiliar with Python scripting, then often this is how it's going to be for the first uh, for your first few scripts. For now, we're just going to put a temp random uh, random attribute here because we, as we said before, we wanted these to be uh, randomized. So I went ahead and finished up all of the Pythonization of uh, of the code from Mel, and let's just add uh, a random attribute here. In order to do that, we need to import the random library that's a standard Python library and we're gonna do random dot random and we'll, that will give us if we select it and control enter it'll give us a random number from 0 to 1 every time so I'm gonna multiply that by say 10 I want, let's say I want a randomized value between uh, negative 10 and 10. I'll just use uh, random dot random, multiply that by 20, and then subtract by 10. And if I run that, it'll give me a randomized value every time between negative 10 and 10. So now we have our. So let's. Uh, Let's give a random x, random y, and random z. So we'll just change ran to rand x. And then we'll uh, copy and paste it three times. And now we have three different randomized values. And we're going to do, we're going to plug those in here. So if everything's correct, we should have exactly the same uh, thing we had earlier, but in Python, so let's try to run it, and we do. Cool. So now what we want to do is to make it easier, because right now we could basically, right now it's locked to whatever frame range, it's uh, whatever, or right now it's locked to 0, 1, and 2. So we want to uh, change it so that it's going to be, it's going to take whatever uh, your current frame is as the start frame and uh, we want it to work on multiple objects that are selected. So to do that we're gonna put all of this into, well first of all we're gonna well, we're gonna put all of this into a for loop so that we could work on multiple objects and then we're gonna do a little bit of math to calculate when uh, what frames it should work off of. So we're going to start by going with a for loop. So for object in mc.ls sl equals true. And what this command does is just list whatever is uh, selected. And this for loop is going to iterate through every single object in this selection. And we're going to move everything up here and we're gonna say our start frame is equal to our current time so in order to get our current time, it's mc.currentTime 
q is equal to true. So we're going to set our start frame here. We'll have another uh, attribute for our current frame that'll basically iterate every every time it goes uh, every time it goes through this loop. So, and for our time, all of these are our time values. So we'll have a current frame here. And then we want current frame plus one because we want uh, we want to add one to whatever the current time is. And for our last part, we want to add two. And at the end, we want to add uh, a frame to current frame so that it's always basically starting uh, the next object selected. It's starting it the next frame over. So current frame is equal to current frame plus one. Okay, so now let's see what this does. We select three objects and run it. Uh, current frame is not defined. Uh, current frame is equal to start frame. Okay, so now let's try it again. Uh, I forgot to uh, actually start operating on the selected object. So we're going to basically take out the hard coded name here and put object plus geo. Oops. We're basically taking it out and adding the variable instead of the name. So obviously it's important to test uh, all of your code as you're writing it. At least it is for me. You don't want to go through like 100, 150 lines and then uh, see that you get a bunch of errors. It's better when it's only 20 lines. So now let's try again, selecting our objects. Ah, I forgot a plus over here. And let's run it again. So, here we go. We have some uh, some animation here. Now let's continue continue here and add. Uh, let's say this cube, and then this, and then these guys. So I'm just randomly selecting things right now just to see if it'll work. Cool. So we want to obviously move this one over so that we see those building first. Let's turn off NURBS curves so we could... So at this point I'd consider this script done 
and I just go and polish up some of the animation that's been created and also obviously set the visibility so that it's uh, it actually when I select the, each of the individual pieces that should be coming on first so obviously these big girders would come on first uh, before all the little ones and this base the base piece at the bottom here would come on before these big girders so all of this would be ordered uh, would be selected and ordered correctly before I ran this script but for now I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with the script and if I need any changes I could do them over here uh, but for now this is what I'm going to use so here I opened up uh, the billboard with the final animation that I used uh, for the film for this billboard in particular so going frame by frame as you as you can see the difference in the script is that I used a lot less uh, rotation so I just uh, scaled the randomization down a little bit and I selected uh, the girders in the correct order so they come in uh, when they actually have a base to come in on and one other thing that I want to add um, to these animations before I uh, before I call them finished is that I want a better way to control them so right now if I want to since all of this is happening you know at frame zero I know that in my shot I'm gonna want them at a different frame starting at a different frame so I'm gonna if I wanted to control them right now I'd basically have to import all the animation select every individual piece and then slide it to uh, to the frame I want but I wanted to figure out a way or find a way to make uh, to make it easier to control hopefully with just one slider with one attribute so I'm gonna co I'm gonna connect uh, all of the animation channels to an offset attribute and to do that I'm gonna need my offset attribute I'm gonna put it on here which is the general settings gear for uh, in my prop rigs so I'm gonna select the settings gear and modify add attribute and call it anim start and make it an integer because I don't want to deal with uh, offsets that are in the point 0.1 or point 0.2 it's always going to be on a frame so now I have my anim start and I need to connect it to every single uh, I need to connect it in some way to uh, to all of the anim curves to do that we're gonna open up our hypergraph and I got this selected so it's uh, showing me the connection to this to that gear and we're gonna create an add node just type add up here add double linear so now we have uh, an add node which basically if you press uh, control Control A to open up the attribute editor. It'll show you that it has two inputs: input one and input two, and it's just going to add those add those values together. So I'm going to connect the gear to the add double linear node, go from anim start to input one and then for input 2 I want the time node to be input 2 so we're gonna have to manually select the, the time node and it's always called time 1 and then we're gonna shift select this shift select the add double linear and 
we have our time node here and drag it over and it's going to go we're going to use out time into input 2 so now if you look in the attribute editor our out time will be the addition of input 1 and input 2 and then we want to connect this into the input of every uh, of every anim curve so to do that faster we're going to go into python write out our uh, import maya commands and then for anim curve in list So you could use the list function to list everything of a certain type. So over here we're listing uh, every anim curve in the scene. And we're going to connect the attribute. So we're gonna we're connecting the add double linear output into the anim curve input. We'll run that, and now we'll see if it works. So everything should work as usual because we have the anim start at 0, but what if we want anim start to start at 20? So it actually negates that value. So now it starts at negative 20. So in order to fix this problem, let's go back into our hypergraph connections. Oh, we have a bunch of connections here, so let's select our add double in here. And frame it. So basically we have these two connections. So what we want to do is cut this connection out. or just like let's create uh, another render node and we'll find a multiply divide node here and we'll go into our connection editor and we're going to connect our gear the anim start into input 1x we're going to select our multiply divide node and make it multiply by negative 1. And then we're going to connect this multiply divide node back into the add double linear. Into input 1. So now if we go to frame 20, it starts our animation. So now we only need to key one attribute and it'll uh, give us the animation for it. It'll give us the animation on that frame. 
So that's very useful when you have, obviously, 20 or 30 billboards and you want to adjust them really quickly, adjust the animation and view it really quickly. And that's, uh, and that's the final billboard animation and billboard rig. So the rig itself has the animation built in just because I kind of knew what I wanted uh, to see and uh, I want I knew what I wanted to control usually if you're just the rigger you don't want to build animation into your rig and that's the end of uh, part two in the next part I'm going to uh, I'm going to go in and start adding these billboards into the scene, into the layout file, and animating them using, uh, using this system. If you like what you see and uh, you learned something, uh, please follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash love in the time of advertising, or stay tuned on, uh, on our website at loveinthetimeofadvertising.com. Thanks for watching.